Chapter 21 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Self.Made Weapon Translator Atlas Studios Editor Atlas Studios in the crowded Newby Square, McRae immediately stood out in his black robe with a silver dot white sword in his hand. This sword is so cool. Gosh, this weapon can even glow. My weapon is like a piece of scrap metal compared to his. It's so ugly. The number of people watching him increased. McRae shook her head helplessly, hiding the color effects of the equipment. Even so, the two pieces of exquisite equipment still showed their extraordinariness. McRae, who was surrounded, turned and left the blacksmith store. After appraising the equipment, McRae walked out of the beginner village and hid in a quiet place before entering the equipment editor space. He wanted to create his own weapon. First, it had to be in the unique equipment editor space of Divine Domain. Completing his own concept of weapons and making every tiny design. Whether or not the designs of self.made weapons successful all depended on the player to complete the space editing of the self.made weapon and upload it to the precise central service terminal of Divine Domain to be judged. The system would use billions of grades of algorithms, from the basic structure of the weapon to the materials needed for each part. A comprehensive judgment on whether the self.made weapon was successful would grant the corresponding attributes of the self.made weapon. After everything was completed, the system would follow the player's successful idea in the space equipment editor. As well as providing the corresponding weapon design plan. The players only needed to prepare all the materials needed, as well as find equipment forgers who needed levels before the player could successfully forge and own their own self.made weapons and Limitless designed by McRae. It was even more special. Limitless wasn't a weapon that was completed in one go, it could even be upgraded. Every upgrade required a new design on top of the original design plan, and the difficulty of crafting increased exponentially. In the equipment editor space, McRae began to follow the memories of his previous life. Bit by bit, he constructed the weapon that he did not have the materials to forge in his previous life, Limitless. The main axis design of the weapon, the structure of the parts that could change the shape of the weapon, the materials used for the various parts, the dimensions of the various parts, and the connections of the mechanisms. Slowly and patiently, McRae constructed the intricate design. Although Limitless structure was extremely complicated, for McRae, who had successfully created the everlasting manufacturing blueprint in his previous life, everything was done with ease. About an hour later. After putting the last piece together, McRae heaved a long sigh of relief. The model in front of McRae began to shine. McRae knew that this was the central computer of Divine Domain reviewing the rationality and specific attributes of the equipment. A moment later, a crisp system notification sounded in McRae's ears. System. Congratulations to player McRae for successfully designing a self.made weapon. This weapon is the first self.made weapon in the entire server. The bonus attribute is that it will never be worn or dropped. Never wear out. This additional attribute surprised him a little. As for the fact that it could not be dropped, McRae really did not know who else in Divine Domain could destroy his equipment. McRae's figure flashed, and he had already exited the equipment editor space. Took out the self.made weapon creation book lying quietly in his backpack and said softly, I have to collect the materials as soon as possible. Materials required. Blue crystal, unique. 1 slash 1 Carl's Rip Rifle 0 to 1 Rager's Lightning Scepter 0 to 1 Kazan's Shadow Bow 0 to 1 Red Crystal 0 slash 20 White Crystal 0 slash 20 Yellow Crystal 0 slash 20 Black Crystal 0 slash 20 These four crystal materials had a chance of dropping on ordinary monsters. However, the remaining three rare materials were actually exclusive weapons for three white silver bosses. Carl's Rip Rifle needed to be obtained from the wild map, the level 10 silver boss in the wilderness, head gunner, Carl. Rager's lightning staff was obtained from the Lord of the Green Forest, Thunder Goblin, Rager. On the other hand, Kazan's shadow bow was somewhat complicated. 
It could only be obtained through the Archer Mentor Kazan's trial mission, Pro Difficulty. McCray looked at the materials he needed, he took some time for thought, dot and then, McCray opened the online exchange and posted the purchase request information of the four crystals. As for the other three materials, decided to collect them herself. The reason was simple. At this stage, other than himself, no other player or guild could defeat these three bosses. McCray had made up his mind. He directly passed the teleportation array and left starter village number 777. He teleported to the main city that only players above level 10 could enter, Gunnus. There were six main cities like Gunnus, which were surrounded by low-dot-level dungeons and monsters. These six main cities were known as Newbie Main Cities. A main city built on a plain. The vast plains made the streets of the main city of Gunnus seem extremely spacious. There was a moat nearly 10 meters deep outside the city. The white city wall and the clear river water below were in perfect harmony. Chapter 22 You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. A Friend's Call. Translator. Atlas Studios Editor. Atlas Studios After being inspected by the NPC guards, McCray walked out of the teleportation point. He entered this long dot lost city. McCray looked over, there was not a single player on the wide street before him. Only the NPCs with all kinds of shops in the city were exchanging familiar pleasantries. From time to time, elite guard patrols with a level of 50 would pass by. The silver armor they wore made these NPCs look majestic. Gunnus was in a relatively safe position on the Divine Domain continent. There were no high-dot-level monster dungeons nearby. It was a transitional map for players to familiarize themselves with Divine Domain. When players reached level 10, he could teleport to a low-dot-level main city-like. Some of the more complicated and interesting gameplay were also unlocked including the most popular arena in his previous life. Just as McCray was about to leave the city, on the way to the green forest, the phone in the room rang. McCray sat up and picked up the phone. Hello, who is this? A familiar voice came through the phone. Dot, McCray, let's go play together. I'm bored to death staying at home. This familiar voice was Jack. The memory in his mind was called out again. Jack was his best friend and they grew up together. Later, because of his family's work, Jack moved to the more prosperous West Ocean City. Jack was a very loyal person. In his previous life, when McCray was in dire straits, it was Jack who had been sponsoring McCray. It allowed him to finally display his skills in God's domain and become an invincible god of war. However, for some reason, Jack was chased to death by an unknown force when the world of divine domain descended. This was also a regret in McRae's heart in his previous life. In this life, I will never let such a tragedy happen again. McRae clenched his fists and calmed down. Where to? After hearing that, Jack replied, Divine Domain. The game that recently became popular in the world. Have you not played it yet? I have. Jack immediately said, that's good. Don't worry, I'll drive over to you now. Jack hung up without waiting for a reply and drove to McRae's place. McRae suppressed the excitement in his heart. He had not seen Jack for a long time and had almost forgotten what this kid looked like ten years ago. McRae grinned. However, his personality is still the same as in my memory. He does whatever he says and can't be stopped. After hanging up, McCray returned to God's domain. When McCray came out of the city of Gunnis, according to the vague memories of his previous life, McCray crossed the two monster spawning maps at the outskirts of the Bell Orchid grassland and green forest. After half an hour of running, McCray finally arrived at the entrance of the forest of green. In front of him was a lush forest. The air was fresh, and golden sunlight shone through the gaps in the forest. McCray was the only player here. After all, the highest level of the current players was only level 5. He was still trying his best to level up in the novice village. 
Without hesitation, McRae chose to enter the solo dungeon, Green Forest. The world loaded, and McRae had entered the instance dungeon. McRae glanced at the goblins wandering around in front of him and cast a profound insight. Goblin Warrior. Normal monster level. 10 HP 950, attack power. 60 defense. 20 skill. Throw, Goblin Archer. Normal monster level. 11 HP 850, attack power. 50 defense. 15 skill. Multiple arrows the damage of these goblins, to a level 0 defensive equipment holder like McRae. It was very high. Once he was surrounded, although it was not very troublesome, McRae could still kill these monsters with ease using the evasions he was good at. However, he did not want to waste too much time on these ordinary monsters. McRae observed the terrain and entered stealth. McRae wanted to bypass these ordinary goblins. After entering stealth, McRae's body immediately turned transparent. As he slowly advanced in the shadows, he calculated at the same time the maximum aggro distance between the goblins and himself. McRae bent over. He calmly and skillfully weaved through the goblins' arrow range. In about five minutes, with his advanced skills and amazing distance control, he successfully passed through the patrol range of five goblins. McRae removed his stealth. He focused his attention on the cave in front of him. The Lord Thunder Goblin, Rager, was in this cave. McRae walked into the cave. The light in the cave was very weak and damp, and a strong smell of decay assaulted his nose. The difficulty of this dungeon was considered relatively difficult among the low dot level solo dungeons. There were more than ten ordinary goblins in the map where the boss was. Some players with insufficient equipment attributes and no control skills would be instantly killed by Rager and the large number of monsters. Chapter 23 You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Lord Thunder Goblin, Rager Translator. Atlas Studios Editor. Atlas Studios Once again, McRae entered stealth mode and walked deeper into the cave. As time passed, McRae, who was slowly moving forward, saw the interior of the cave. In the cave. Most of the tree demons were still in place, in an unactivated state. After a while, one or two goblin warriors would walk back and forth. Each goblin was only five yards away and extremely close. The goblin archers at the back looked around sharply, and in the deepest part of the cave, a white goblin was dozing off on a simple throne. McRae was half dot squatting on a huge rock. He was motionless, as if he had been petrified. It was as if time had stopped for McRae. However, McRae's sharp eyes were constantly calculating the time and distance between each goblin's patrol turns. A moment later, McRae took out the novice crossbow he bought from the blacksmith from his backpack. Holding the crossbow tightly, McRae's breathing became even weaker. McRae's eyes, the crosshair of the crossbow, and the three goblins in the distance formed a straight line. A breeze blew in the cave. McRae silently felt the wind speed. McRae directly raised the crossbow and pulled the trigger three times, but the hand holding the crossbow actually trembled a little. But after McRae shot the arrow, he did not even look to see if the arrows behind him had hit the target. He jumped off the boulder and ran out of the cave. His movements were clean and smooth. Whoosh! 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 Three arrows shot out. But if someone was there, they would definitely be able to see where the three arrows were flying in the air. It was not a straight line. Instead, they shot in three different directions. It was all because of the slight trembling of McRae's hand. McRae actually made a mistake. The first arrow streaked through the air and accurately hit the foot of a goblin archer at the back. The second arrow was nailed to a short tree beside the goblin archer on the right. The dull sound of two arrows piercing through an object immediately alerted the nearby goblins. Almost ten goblins went deeper into the cave to look for intruders. 
BL.net the last arrow hit the goblin warrior at the front. The goblin warrior that was hit by the arrow immediately noticed McRae, who had jumped off the boulder to escape. The two other goblin warriors also noticed it. The furious goblin warrior waved the wooden club in his hand and chased after McRae with bared fangs and brandished claws. This was McRae's strategy. He shot three arrows in an instant, and the first two arrows were aimed at the goblins in the back line. Attracting the attention of most monsters, he lured it deeper into the cave. And the last arrow pulled the aggro of the three goblin warriors at the front. McRae's hand shaking was not a mistake. It was an extremely high dot end operation technique that was passed down among the top thieves and archers of the future. And all because of this amazing technique, McRae sent three goblin warriors away from the goblin encampment, leaving their group and chased after him. He only had to deal with three level point ten ordinary goblin warriors. This was too easy for McRae. As he was running in front, he quickly replaced the crossbow in the equipment column. After equipping the Lubbock sword, he stopped. In a flash, McRae dodged the goblin warrior's wooden cones. He stabbed the goblin's neck with the Lubbock sword. He used precise openings to produce high damage from Lubbock sword. A level 10 goblin warrior was instantly killed by McRae. The two goblin warriors caught up. One swept with his arm, while the other picked up a stone from the ground and threw it. McRae first turned sideways to avoid the throw, with a violent charge, he quickly moved in front of the second goblin warrior. With a low shout, he used a warrior's stun strike. A stun symbol immediately appeared above the goblin's head. The third goblin warrior had caught up. Looking at the two goblin warriors who were leaning against each other, McRae already had a plan. McRae raised his sword with both hands, bent his body slightly, and then jumped into the air. A level 15 warrior skill, Collapsing Mountain, was unleashed. Boom. 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 After two muffled sounds, dust rose from the ground. After the dust settled, McRae's figure became clearer. The only things left on the ground were the corpses of the two goblin warriors and the marks left by the collapsing mountain. McRae didn't stay for long. He switched his weapon to a beginner's crossbow and entered the cave again. After repeating the same trick a few times, only the Lord of Thunder Goblin, Rager, was left in the cave. McRae deactivated stealth. He switched his weapon to the Lubbock Sword. He entered the range of Rager's aggro. Chapter 24 You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Silver Weapon, Rager's Lightning Scepter Translator. Atlas Studios Editor. Atlas Studios Sensing McRae's approach, Lord Rager woke up from his slumber. He opened his tiny eyes. Lightning flashed across his cold eyes from time to time. Rager slowly stood up. It also allowed McRae to see its full appearance. The Thunder Goblin was short and skinny. He was only about a third as tall as McRae. It had a broad face with a sharp nose, two terrifying fangs that were two feet long, and held a dark green staff in its hand. That was the fusion material that McRae needed. Silver dot grade weapon, Reg's lightning scepter. Threw a profound insight over, and Reg's attributes immediately appeared. Rager. Lord dot grade boss, silver, level. 15 HP, 5000, attack power. 190 defense. 90, skill. Thunderfall. After chanting for 3 seconds, summons 10 by 3 lightning bolts in the designated area. Each lightning bolt will cause 100 to 150 points of lightning magic damage. Thunder Imprisonment. Instant Skill. After locking on to a target within 30 yards, it will imprison the target. Imprisonment Time. 5 Seconds. McRae calmly looked at the fierce Rager in front of him, his heart calm. With my current attributes, it's not difficult to handle this. I just need to use substitute to dodge the lightning shackles. Lord Rager looked at McRae in front of him. He shouted sharply. 
Damn human, die. Rager angrily raised the staff in his hand and smashed it at. Seeing Reg rushing over, McRae rolled to avoid it. Boom. Reg's staff hit the ground. A deep hole appeared on the ground. While Reg was frozen, McRae took advantage of the situation. A heroic strike landed on Reg's body. Point two ten a high damage number floated above Reg's head. McRae said with satisfaction, a level 10 silver dot grade longsword. It's quite impressive to deal this much damage to such a boss. Rager, who had suffered a great deal of damage, roared angrily. Thunder imprisonment. The scepter in his hand emitted a purple glow. It directly locked McRae in place. When Reg saw the imprisoned McRae, he raised his scepter with both hands and smiled sinisterly. Die. Lightning strike. A purple lightning chain wrapped around McRae's body, preventing him from moving. However, in the next second, McRae, who had just been imprisoned, had become a scarecrow. It was a mage's life. Saving skill, substitute puppet. McRae charged forward. He quickly closed in on the chanting Rager and used a stun to interrupt his chanting. Seeing that Reg had entered a state of dizziness, McRae quickly circled behind the goblin and used the warrior's sword aura slash. McRae had the bonus damage from a thief's back attack, along with the damage of the silver dot grade weapon in his hand, and that was high enough. A few slashes. And Reg's HP had already dropped by half. Rager, who was hit by the sword aura slash, instantly recovered from the stun. Another thunder imprisonment was about to be unleashed. However, McRae didn't give it another chance. The moment he raised his staff, he replaced the Lubbock sword in his hand with a new staff and shouted, Silence. A white light emerged from the tip of S staff and hit Rager, who had just raised his staff. The white light instantly enveloped him. Its head displayed a large symbol of the silenced effect. Although Thunder Imprisonment was a skill that could be used conveniently, McRae had already memorized what the casting looked like the first time Rager used it. Why would he let Rager release it again? Identifying the movement of the hand and predict the release of the corresponding skill. This was also a necessary ability to become a top player. Switching weapons required a cooldown time, which was why McRae was in such a hurry to create his own weapon. McRae, who cannot switch weapons to the Lubbock sword, had no choice but to use the new staff in his hand to release a low. Level fireball point 34 an insignificant number floated up. If not for the fact that the original basic damage of fireball was high enough, the damage from the level 0 novice staff would not even be able break through Reg's magic defense. However, the cooldown time for switching weapons was not over yet. McRae could only rely on his positioning at this point, and start pulling the distance between him and Reg. From time to time, he would use some small skills to deplete Rager's HP. McRae, who was moving around in the cave, looked at Reg, whose HP was almost at the bottom, and said sharply, I can finally switch weapons. McRae switched his new wand to Lubbock sword. Charge. McRae's whole body glowed red. He quickly approached Rager, who was locked on by charge. Heroic strike. McRae, who was close to Rager, raised the Lubbock sword and made a clean side cut. Dong. Reg's already low HP was instantly emptied. The corpse fell heavily to the ground. Many materials dropped. But the staff that he wanted, wasn't there. Chapter 25 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Server Announcement First Clear of an Adventure Mode Dungeon Translator Atlas Studios Editor Atlas Studios, Goblin Skull, Dark Blood Gem, Goblin Seal A pile of materials dropped from Rager's corpse. Since this was the first clear of the Green Forest, many materials dropped. But unfortunately, the staff that he wanted did not drop. But it didn't surprise McRae at all. The drop rate of equipment was very low in the first place, not to mention a silver dot grade weapon in the early stages of the game. 
McCray put all the materials that the boss dropped into his backpack, L.O. and quickly walked into the portal to leave the dungeon. System. Congratulations to player McCray for completing the first kill of the normal dot level green forest dungeon. Rewards. Purple Agate X10, Flame Essence X10, Black Diamond X10. As expected, the world chat channel of Divine Domain was once again in an uproar. Master McCray is awesome. It's the first clear of another dungeon. Please guide me. Green Forest. Why haven't I heard of this dungeon before? F asterisk CK. I just checked Divine Domain's official website. Green Forest is a high dot difficulty single dot player dungeon in the outskirts of the main city, Gunnis. Main city. Isn't that only accessible to players above level 10? God McRae is already level 10. F asterisk CK, awesome. Our guild leader has organized a group of 50 people to farm monsters. After a whole day of experience, he's only level 8. Who is this McRae? At the same time, in a rented apartment in Long High City. Bill angrily watched the world channel flood with praises for. Suddenly, he thought of the silver dot rank Lubbock sword. Bill jumped up and punched through the computer screen in front of him. Damn you. This Lubbock sword should belong to me, Bill. Bill roared angrily at the air. Not long after. Bill, who had finally calmed down, looked at the broken computer screen and was furious again. He picked up the keyboard on the table and slammed it against the wall. McCray. Just you wait. Ha. Ah. Another heart dot wrenching roar came from the rental house. Meanwhile, inside the room, McCray sat up and stretched his stiff neck. Then he started a new round of dungeon expeditions. This time, the dungeon that McCray entered was the adventure dot level green forest. Apart from the instance dungeon in the starter village, the other instance dungeons had three difficulties. They were normal, adventure, and expert. And only after passing the dungeon difficulty of the previous level, would he be able to unlock the next level of difficulty. There were only two difficulty options in the newbie village and there were no unlock restrictions. The higher the difficulty of the dungeon, the stronger the attributes of the monsters in the dungeon, correspondingly, the higher the drop rate of rare materials and high dot grade equipment. But a dungeon of this level, even if it was at the expert level, it was just that the overall attributes of the monsters had increased by 30%, and the time required to clear the dungeon was slightly longer. However, this difficulty could only be ignored by someone like McRae, who was an expert in all professions. If it was a team dungeon, even if it wasn't 30%, but an increase of the attributes of the monster by 1%, it would be a burden to the entire team. Whether it was the defense against the warriors in front, the damage output of the back row, or even a chance for healers to heal. It was a serious challenge. A slight deviation, a 1% HP difference, a slight decrease in defense, and a second late in the support stuns, all of these could lead to the death of the entire team. McRae was repeatedly grinding the green forest dungeon. From adventure level to expert level, the materials in S backpack were getting richer and richer. It even dropped a pair of steel. Grade boots. However, Rager's lightning staff still did not drop no matter how many tries. Just as McRae was frantically clearing the dungeon, the system's global notifications kept appearing on the world chat. System. Congratulations to player McRae for completing the first kill of the adventure. Level Green Forest Dungeon. The reward is rare materials. Red agate asterisk 20 earth essence asterisk 20, black diamond asterisk 20, and the skill book purgatory slash asterisk 1. System. Congratulations to player McRae for completing the expert dot level green forest instance dungeon first clear. Reward. Shadow eye asterisk 1. System. Congratulations to player McRae for completing the first clear of the expert dot level instance dungeon. Reward. One arcane crystal. 
players from all over the world watched as the system announcements flooded the screen. From the initial shock and admiration, to then the surprise and the doubt, in the end, it was acceptance and even habit. The comments on the world chat were. Damn. Impressive. Expert level difficulty. Is this really something a human can do? Later on. Ah. There's another first clear record. Oh, it's the god. That's fine. Just get used to it. I feel like I can solo dungeons now. Chapter 26 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Frost Forest Dungeon Translator Atlas Studios Editor Atlas Studios just as all the players in Divine Domain were wondering just who this god was constantly killing bosses was. McCray was repeatedly grinding the expert difficulty Green Forest. Meanwhile, Divine Domain server seemed to be playing a joke on McCray. Not once. Not even twice. Replayed the dungeon seven times in a row. Rager's lightning scepter still did not drop. Just as McCray exited the dungeon to eat and prepare to continue, a friend notification from the system popped up. He opened it. The system prompted the player, Roderick, to add him as a friend. Roderick. McCray seemed to remember something. However, he really couldn't remember who this person was. McCray, who was in a hurry to continue grinding the forest of green, clicked, ignore. But when McCray opened the friend request column, Roderick had actually sent him dozens of friend requests. In the end, McCray nodded. Right after McCray accepted the application, a message popped up in the dialog box. Hello, let's get to know each other. I'm Roderick. I bought rare materials from you before. After Roderick sent the message, he crossed his hands. And patiently waited for the dungeon killer, S reply. At this moment, McCray finally remembered who Roderick was. It was the guild master of the Dark Magic Guild in his previous life, Roderick. McCray answered simply. Hello. After the previous private auction, Roderick had a rough understanding of S personality. This person must be a pure businessman. Thinking of this, Roderick decided to cut to the chase. After all, businessmen cherished their time. And so he sent the message quickly. Brother, we want to do a dungeon here. The reward is generous. Are you interested? McCray calmly typed out two words. I'm not free. Now, all of McCray's goals are to make limitless, so being asked to clear a meaningless dungeon. It was impossible. Roderick looked at these two words. Even though he had been mentally prepared to be rejected, but he still couldn't accept it. He was the leader of a 100-dot-man team. How could anyone talk to him like that? However, this was McRae, who had obtained four first clears in two days, and certainly he was worth it for him to put down his pride to rope him in. Although they couldn't form a guild yet, the moment players reached level 10, they could apply to create in any major city. Dot Roderick was now level 9. He was about to reach level 10, and was planning to establish a union. A top-dot-notch gaming expert like McRae was exactly what he needed. As the saying went, it was easy to get a thousand troops, but hard to get a general. Such a talent was comparable to his current 100-dot-man team. So Roderick made a decision. No matter how much McRae refused, he had to make friends with this guy first. Roderick himself, after the last private transaction, had already sent people everywhere to inform. To Roderick, this kind of super expert. Even if he couldn't join the guild, it was still good to befriend. So Roderick decided to invite McCray to clear a dungeon together, try to make friends, wait until they became familiar with each other, and slowly get the relationship further, using even generous rewards to keep him. Remembering that, Roderick explained his intentions and asked sincerely, Brother, when are you free? To be honest, our team is preparing to challenge the adventure level Frost Forest Dungeon. I need a brother, a top dot notch expert like you, if you successfully clear the dungeon, all the equipment dropped will be yours. How about that? 
I just want a first kill record. It'll be easier to find people when I establish a guild in the future. If it was the previous McRae, he would probably agree to such a request. But in this life, McRae had no time to waste. McRae sat in front of the computer. Looking at Roderick's message, he rubbed his hands and thought seriously. The Dark Magic Guild was quite strong. This Roderick had a good reputation in my previous life. I'll give him some support. It can be considered that I've found an ally in advance. Having made up his mind, McRae sent a message. Sorry, I really don't have time. After seeing McRae's reply, Roderick was greatly disappointed. But he could also see McRae's sincerity. He thought of the expert.level solo dungeon that he had just cleared in the morning. Roderick was disappointed, but quickly understood where he was coming from. After all, every bit of time in the early stages of the game was precious. Everyone was frantically farming monsters to level up and hoard resources. But just as Roderick was about to turn off the dialogue box and end the conversation, he heard from McRae again. Although I can't go, I can give you a guide to clear Frost Forest. This news made Roderick, who did not have much hope, instantly recover. He immediately replied. Thank you so much. Brother, what do you need? I'll try my best to help you. McRae replied. Let's be friends. Chapter 27 You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Breaking the Dungeon Clearing Record. Translator. Atlas Studios Editor. Atlas Studios After McRae sent the message, he ignored Roderick's reply. According to his memory, the best class lineup for clearing Frost Forest, character attribute requirements, the effect of a monster's skill. The map traps that needed attention, all were sent to Roderick. Roderick looked at the nanny.level guide that McRae had sent him. His eyes were filled with vigor. There was no time to think about why McRae was so familiar with the dungeons, and so while expressing gratitude, he quickly studied the requirements of the guide, and formed a team that specialized in clearing Frost Forest. At the same time after taking a look at Roderick's thank you letter, McRae closed the dialogue box and said coldly, hmm, for major guilds, I want to see how arrogant you can be in this life. McRae, who had done all this, switched his attention to tidying up his personal inventory. He sorted out what he might need and placed them in the warehouse. And the useless materials were conveniently hung on the trading platform. After all, no matter how small a mosquito was, it was still meat. Right now, he wasn't that well dot off. After McRae equipped the four pieces of iron dot great equipment that dropped, the equipment bar was almost full of black ironware. Main weapons. Sword, silver, accessories. Deceiver's chain, bronze, unique, armor. Tenacious vine armor, black steel, lower armor. Juvenile leather pants, black steel, belt. Recruit belt, black steel, shoes. Silk cloth boots, black steel. These were level 10 black iron equipment, and so the attribute benefits that McRae received were quite high. From the looks of it now, McRae's attributes panel made him a humanoid bronze boss. Player. McRae occupation. All, class expert constitution. 85 Strength. 70 Intelligence. 19 Agility. 26 Spirit. 10 Physical Resistance. 39 Magic Resistance. 36 In this data, at this stage, it was very exaggerated compared to normal players. It was even five times the attributes of mainstream players. McRae, who had changed into new equipment, continued his journey of farming dungeons. Green Forest Dungeon McRae quickly adapted to the new equipment attributes and cleared the Green Forest Dungeon again and again. Soon, the system server announcement rang again and again. System Congratulations to player McRae for breaking the record for clearing the Green Forest Expert difficulty. The latest record is 31 minutes and 46 seconds. System. 
Congratulations to player McRae for breaking the record for clearing the expert dot level difficulty of Green Forest. The latest record is 29 minutes and 32 seconds. Finally, within 5 hours, there were a total of 9 system announcements of McRae breaking the record. In the end, Green Forest's record was stuck at 26 minutes and 12 seconds. Silence. God McRae has finally stopped. 26 minutes and 12 seconds. I don't think even God McRae himself can break this record. He was not in the mood to care about the praise and suspicion from the outside world, however. McRae excitedly put the silver dot grade regs lightning scepter that had finally dropped into his backpack. McRae let out a long sigh of relief, phew. McRae looked up. The blazing sun outside the window had already turned into a starry night sky. The long period of sitting made him feel a little tired. But McRae didn't want to stop. There were still two key synthetic materials waiting for him to collect. McRae stood up and stretched a little. Just as McRae sat down and was about to head to the wilderness to look for Headshot Gunner, Carl. The roar of a motorcycle appeared downstairs. Boom. 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 After the engine died, there was an excited shout. McRae. McRae. This was. This voice was familiar to him. It was Jack. He actually drove straight here. He immediately stood up. He opened the window and leaned out. He waved and replied, Jack, come up. Room 302. Not long after, McRae heard footsteps in the corridor. McRae opened the door. The young man in front of him picked up the thin and weak McRae. Why are you so slow? McRae punched Jack's chest and said excitedly, Have you eaten hormones? You've grown so big. The two of them looked at their old friend whom they had not seen for a long time and laughed out loud. A hearty laugh rang out in the corridor. The two of them entered the room. Jack looked at the Divine Domain game on McRae's computer. He asked in surprise, Damn. Dot. You're that dungeon killer, God McRae. I thought it was just a coincidence. Jack looked at the game character standing in the middle of the main city of Gunnis and shouted. Looking at his shocked friend, McCree nodded helplessly. If you're talking about McRae who cleared the expert dot level dungeon in Green Forest. That's me. Chapter 28 You are listening at Novel Full dot Audio. Arcane Crystal. Translator. Atlas Studios Editor. Atlas Studios Chapter 28. Arcane Crystal. After hearing McRae's affirmative reply, Jack exclaimed, Hurry up and bring me with you, I'm a rookie arcane mage. Respectable dungeon killer. God McRae. Looking at his friend's exaggerated expression, McRae scolded jokingly, That's enough. You're so disgusting that I'm about to vomit my food. I have something to do now, so I don't have time to take you. McRae looked at the silent Jack, who didn't look very happy. He said lightly, Oh well. I originally wanted to give you a top dot grade item, but since you're so unwilling, forget it. After saying that, McRae sighed and sat in front of the computer, pretending to be regretful. Hearing this, Jack immediately grabbed McRae who was sitting down. There was no resentment on his face. He said ingratiatingly, I knew you'd be loyal. What kind of item is that? Can it help me clear the dungeon? McRae opened his storage unit. He took out the arcane crystal and said, this is it. Looking at the puzzled Jack, McRae patiently explained. Don't look down on this arcane crystal. After using the arcane crystal, you will receive a permanent arcane halo buff. Jack looked at the sphere dot like arcane crystal and asked, arcane halo. McRae continued, this item is extremely rare. I didn't even get the first clear of the instance dungeon, but still I got such an amazing item. Arcane Crystal, it's a top dot grade tool exclusive to you magic users. Arcane Crystal, after use, would give the summoner a permanent single dot target halo buff. 
the effect of the arcane aura was huge. It could greatly increase the recovery speed of arcane mages, as well as reducing skill cooldown. The degree of reduction increased with the level of the arcane aura. An arcane mage with an arcane aura was equivalent to having a magic charging device. The arcane aura could be upgraded, too, so in the later stages of the game, top.notch arcane wizards would try their best to purchase the arcane crystal. All to upgrade the arcane aura. The effect of the level 3 arcane aura was already very obvious. When it reached level 5, basically, this made you pretty invincible. However, the drop rate of arcane crystals was extremely rare. Usually, there was not even a single arcane crystal in the market. It was an awkward situation where there was a demand but no market. Dot arcane wizards with fifth dot level arcane auras were extremely terrifying. In his previous life, McRae had fought with an arcane mage who had a fifth dot level arcane aura. The two of them had a conflict because of something. At that time, McRae had underestimated the power of the 5th dot level arcane aura. An arcane mage with a 5th dot level arcane aura, was like a magic machine gun. He cast all sorts of skills as if he didn't need any mana. The arcane wizard went all out, and actually prevented McRae from getting close to him. In the end, the other party's backup arrived, and McRae had to retreat temporarily. Even though McRae found an opportunity to kill him when he was alone afterwards, that crazy firepower. It left a deep impression on McRae. After Jack heard McRae's explanation, he opened his laptop and logged into the game. He urged impatiently, as expected of a good brother. Fast, give it to me. McRae looked at the anxious Jack. He had no choice but to use the teleportation circle to head to Novice Village No. 567 where Jack was and traded the arcane crystal with him. Jack looked at the fully armed McRae. He said enviously, what equipment are you wearing? They look pretty good. Especially this silver dot white sword. McRae didn't hide it and shared it with Jack. It's nothing. Other than the Lubbock sword, there's also the deceiver's chain. The rest are just temporary trash. Jack looked at McRae's black iron armor. Then, he looked at the two whiteboard equipment that he had painstakingly obtained. A punch landed on McRae's shoulder. You brat. Are you trying to piss me off? Then, he used the arcane crystal. A translucent, faintly discernible hexagram array appeared under Jack's feet. It made Jack look like an expert. Jack looked at the beautiful array under his feet in surprise and said happily, Huh, this mysterious water halo looks pretty good. It fits the temperament of an expert like me. But this light is too faint. If only it was a little brighter. McRae looked at his friend speechlessly and shook his head. The brightness of this halo will increase as the level of the halo increases. Looking at Jack, who was already using his character to hook up with female players, McRae sighed helplessly. As expected, no matter how many times he was reborn, this guy is still the same. Chapter 29 You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Headshot Gunner, Carl Translator. Atlas Studios Editor. Atlas Studios McRae looked at Jack, who was obsessed with showing off his halo, and shook his head. He entered the teleportation array and returned to Gunnis City. At this moment, on the square of the main city of Gunnis. There were already players who had reached level 10. McRae took a quick glance. There were about 50 to 60 people. This situation gave McRae a sense of urgency. Headshot Gunner, Carl, wasn't an instance dungeon boss. It was a wild boss in the wilderness. In Divine Domain, other than the bosses in the instance dungeon that could be refreshed upon entering the instance dungeon, there was a cooldown time for wild bosses. The lowest black iron dot tier boss had the shortest respawn time. Refreshing took 6 hours. Meanwhile, bronze bosses required 12 hours to respawn. The respawn time of a silver boss was even longer, a full 24 hours. As for gold, 
Platinum, Epic and Legendary bosses, their respawn time ranged from 3 days to a month. For the highest dot level mythical bosses, every monster was of unique class, meaning that they would not respawn after being killed by players. The target that McRae wanted to kill, Headgunner Carl, was a silver dot grade boss. If it were killed in advance, McRae would have to wait another day, waiting for Carl to respawn again. For McRae, who didn't want to waste a second, it was unacceptable. McRae turned around and walked directly to the teleportation array that could teleport him to the wilderness. Just a second before McRae switched the map, he could faintly see the people in the plaza rushing towards the teleportation array. The scene changed. What appeared in front of him was a vast plain that stretched as far as the eye could see. Looking around, there were huge cracks on the ground. Apart from some hemp yellow, buckthorn bushes, and other heat. Resistant plants scattered across the boundless Gobi Desert, there were very few other plants. A gust of wind blew, stirring up sand and sand, mixed with the roars of the monsters. McRae looked at the desolate plain, and the uneasiness in his heart became more and more obvious. When McRae entered the teleportation circle, he had already noticed that the players in the square had intentionally or unintentionally locked their gazes on him. McRae had great faith in his sixth sense of danger, as this sense of crisis had saved his life many times. Without hesitation, McRae switched the Lubbock sword to a new wand. After observing the rear, he found a suspicious place. McRae scoffed coldly. Devil's eye. The shadow priest's detection skill was released at the same time. A purple light instantly gathered in McRae's eyes. Indeed. He was being followed. It was a team of about 15 people. They were all hiding in a bush not far away. In a bush, a warrior asked softly, Captain, has this McRae discovered us? The elementalist who was lying beside the warrior also said, that's right. The purple light that came out of his eyes just now made me feel like our invisibility potion had been seen through. At the front of the team, a man holding a black iron longsword shouted in a low voice. All of you shut up. This is a lesser invisibility potion that I spent a lot of money on. There's no way he'll notice. Lie down and wait for my orders. When the others heard this, they could only continue lying on the ground. McRae didn't want to know who they were, nor did he want to know what their goal was. Because their strength was too weak for McRae. But McRae didn't want to fight the headshot gunner Carl. With a bunch of annoying flies following behind him. The monsters in the wilderness were mainly jackals. Not far away, a grey figure was wandering in the bushes. It was a wild jackal. That pair of blood. Red eyes sent chills down one spine. Its bloody mouth was drooling, and on its back, bone spikes broke out of its skin as they glowed with a cold light. Wilderness Jackal. Ordinary Wild Monster Level. 12 HP, 1120 Attack Power. 75 Defense. 40 Skill. Wolf Raid monsters with such attributes were too weak for McRae. However, the appearance of this wild jackal was just right. The people at the back must have used some special invisibility tools, but at this stage, low dot level invisibility items could not help players hide the aggro system of the activated monsters. McRae calculated the distance between himself and them, and the distance between himself and the jackals in the wilderness. McRae, who had calculated everything, switched the new wand in his hand to the novice crossbow. Without hesitation, he fired an arrow at the jackal. The arrow pierced through the sky and it accurately hit the jackal's body. McRae's high strength attribute caused 180 points of damage. The injured wild jackal raised its head and wailed before it launched the wolf raid. He charged at McRae at double speed. McRae looked at the wild jackals rushing over before half heartedly looking behind him. The wild jackal was already in front of McRae, and McRae snorted at the empty back. A thought that provoking light flashed in his cold eyes, and he activated his skill. Greater Stealth Greater Stealth was an upgraded version of stealth among thief skills. 
it could force players out of battle, clear the monster's aggro. In short, it was a thief's life. Saving skill. But at this moment, McRae didn't use it to save his life. At this moment, the players behind McRae had been brought into the aggro range of the activated wild wolves. The injured wild jackal did not care about the sudden disappearance of the person just now. It only wanted to tear apart all the creatures it could sense. Chapter 30 You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Lord, Level Boss. Translator. Atlas Studios Editor. Atlas Studios The jackals in the wilderness sensed the people who had drunk the lesser invisibility potion. It raised its huge head. Then let out a unique howl, and triggered the signal for the jackals in the wilderness to summon the pack. The corners of McRae's lips curled up. He left the scene without looking back. Have fun with these animals. On the desolate plains, the steam made people feel like they were in a steamer. From time to time, the howls of wild jackals could be heard. McRae effortlessly got rid of the tracking team behind him, and had no trouble quickly traversing the wilderness. After about ten minutes, McRae looked into the distance. A dilapidated cabin appeared at the end of his vision. This was the spawn point of the headshot gunner Carl. McRae immediately slowed down, entered stealth, and moved forward cautiously. Headshot gunner Carl wore a wild red leather armor, and there was no expression on his gray face. This was the characteristic of undead creatures. He raised the grayish dot brown rifle in his hands, all the while using his chaotic eyes to observe his surroundings through the crosshairs. It was as if he was patrolling his territory. Carl. Lord. Level boss, silver. Tier, level. 15 HP, 5000 attack power. 250 defense. 85, skill. Shoot at random. Headshot gunner Carl uses a flintlock to fire six powerful bullets at the surrounding enemies. Cripple strike, passive. When the headshot gunner Carl hits a target, he will weaken the armor of the target. Each hit will weaken five points, stacking up to ten times. McRae was slightly shocked. As expected of a wild boss. Attack power is as high as 250 points. In addition to Carl's passive skill, Broken Strike, if I got hit a few times, I'd have almost zero physical resistance. Just have to be careful. McRae no longer hesitated. He held the novice dagger that he had changed earlier in his hand, and used the stealth skill to slowly move toward Carl's back. Bosses on the silver level and above had very strong senses. However, it was useless against the high-level McRae. Although the levels in Divine Domain did not enhance the player's attributes, there was a level difference. The monsters at this stage basically couldn't sense McRae in stealth mode. McRae was moving forward slowly, and as he took use of his superior stealth skills and level advantage, McRae surprisingly moved until he was only 10 yards away from the boss. At such a close distance, the patterns on the leather armor of the headshot gunner Carl could be seen clearly. In front of the computer, McRae looked at the pale Carl. He slowly exhaled and moved his shoulders. It's been too long since I moved my fingers. Let's warm up. McRae's warm-ups were done quickly, and his narrowed eyes became a little more energetic. On the screen, the character's weapon had changed from a novice dagger to a silver dot white Lubbock sword. McRae's figure was also fully revealed from his stealth state. The headshot gunner Carl also discovered the intruder at the first moment. He immediately turned around. And gave a bloodthirsty smile to the expressionless McRae. McRae drew the Lubbock sword and said softly. Let's begin. Before the head dot shot gunman Carl could raise the grayish dot brown rifle in his hand, McRae's hands were already moving. McRae crouched slightly. His left and right hands grabbed the hilt of his sword, upwards. The warrior's basic flying skill was unleashed, and the Lubbock sword in McRae's hand instantly shone with a golden light. He drew a beautiful semicircle in the air with his sword. Carl, who was sent flying, immediately floated in the air. 
McRae slowly said, stay up there for a while longer. Before the headshot gunner Carl landed, the long sword in McRae's hand slashed through the air twice. He instantly attacked with two demonic flurries, and Carl, who was about to land, was sent flying again. After Carl fell nearly ten yards, McRae quickly took half a step back. He held the sword in his right hand and cleanly drew a cross at the falling Carl. The sharp slash left a strikingly bloody cross mark in the air. Cross slash. Carl, who was about to land, was instantly sent flying into the air by the skill. The angry headshot shooter pulled the trigger of his long rifle and fired randomly into the air. But it was all in vain. McRae's combo seemed endless, and he could always release the most suitable floating skill at the most appropriate time. At this moment, Jack was stunned by McRae's actions. In Jack's eyes, McRae's long fingers were typing rapidly on the keyboard, up and down, fast hits here and there. As if his hands were like two butterflies dancing nimbly in the air. The hands were perfect, and the sound was also very pleasant, with no sense of disorder at all. McRae's rhythmic tapping really made Jack, who was at his side, feel that the person in front of him was not someone who was farming a boss. It was a world.class pianist playing a world.famous song. Although Jack was not a top player, and while he didn't understand what McRae's insane hand speed meant, he did have one feeling. This guy looked so awesome. 